Hi, I'm Todd Anderson. And I'm Chris Van Meter. And you're watching the Versus Series on StarCityGames.com. Hey everybody, CVM here, joined once again by Todd Anderson. Since BBD, oh, I, I'm back. BBD is still jet setting in Canada. Man, figured you know if you want to go to Canada, you just stay there. This is America. You come back or you stay. <laughs> I mean, he that's better literally have your only choice. He's bringing maple syrup though. Oh, okay, that's all right then. Yeah, maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever tried to eat pancakes with that beard? I don't. I, I feel have. like it's miserable. I just have to keep a damp napkin with me. <laughs> just a, a whole thing of baby wine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an event. You take a shower when you're done. Yeah. Uh, but we are going to be battling some not standard. Yeah. So Pro Tour Magic Origins just happened in Mono Red 1 yet again. Wee. Uh, we also had Star City Game Regionals, which was sweet, uh, that Todd Anderson won with Ban Heroic. I chose to play Rally and got punished accordingly. Uh, but we are going to be battling with Legacy because we love Legacy, you love Legacy, and this weekend is the $20,000 Open in Washington, D.C. Yeah, it's going to be sweet. That's Legacy. Yep. Uh, so we went to D.C. like a month and a half ago for something. I can't remember what it was, but I remember being there. I also remember it being sweet. If you've never been to downtown Washington, D.C., there's tons of sweet architecture. It's a really great venue. The uh, The convention center is awesome. Yeah. They even have Starbucks in there, too, so if you like coffee. It's real nice. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be playing some Legacy today. I'm going to be playing Shardless Soul Tie, which I will undoubtedly accidentally call Shardless Bug at least three times in this video. I'm going to try least. really hard not to, <laughs> though. Uh, this deck's been around a long time. Uh, I think it was originally built by Jerry Thompson, uh, the back end of 2012 a million years ago yeah and uh, i ended up using it to top eight uh an invitational uh in los angeles i believe as as my legacy deck in the portion uh, as opposed to the standard portion obviously but uh the deck's really powerful it has a lot of synergy it's uh very straightforward though has discard some counter spells with force of will a lot of really efficient creatures and card draw that's basically it yeah in formats where Liliana is a great way to gain advantage. The Shardless Sultai deck is usually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, this deck has a ton of ways to protect its Planeswalkers. Uh, I think this is one of the better Jason Liliana decks just because you put so many things onto the table. Like, even chump blocking with a Shardless Agent for a turn is good enough usually, so you get one more activation out of your Planeswalker. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you put up a huge front with, like, Tarmogoyce and things like that to, to really keep your opponent from being able to pressure them. And I'm going to be playing a Jeskai Stoneblade deck. Uh, the old blue, white, red colors. Again, this deck has been around for a very long time. Albeit, this list does have less light lightning bolts than what would be normal. Uh, and we've got a couple sweet new cards in the sideboard that we hope to use in this matchup. Oh, Nahiri? Oh, yeah, that card is nice. Yeah. So, uh, one quick thing about Jeskai Stoneblade. Uh, this version uh, the CVM is going to be using is much more geared to beat combo decks. Mm -hmm. It has uh, two copies of Spell Pierce, uh, two Spell Snares, and two Counter Spells, as opposed to the traditional like seven spot removal spells that most of these uh, older Jeskai decks did play. Uh, the dig through times are going to be pretty sweet in this matchup for CVM, mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to be something that I need to focus on trying to stop uh, or kill him before he's able to find one. Yeah, this is going to be leaning on Snapcaster Mage as more of extra copies of spot removal spells and then using the hard counters to try and fight the combo decks. Yep. All right, guys. Well, let's get to the match. Check it out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Versus video. CVM here joined by... Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson. And we are battling some sweet legacy action in preparation for the Open Series this coming weekend in Washington, D.C., which will be one of the last two times that you can actually get this the Tassiper format. So DC and Charlotte are the last two opens before the Invitational in Jersey, which at that point we're going to be switching over to the Season 4 playmat that I haven't seen yet, so TBD. I don't know what it is. It is to be determined. Uh, but that's the last time you can get this, and you get it absolutely for free just for playing. So make sure you go check that out. Yeah, and, and also, message me on Facebook if you want to trade for some, because i got a few extras. <laughs> so I, I go to quite a few opens, so... <laughs> so we're going to be battling some Legacy. I am on Jeskai Stoneblade. Todd is on Shardless Sultai. Let's do some sevens. To All see right. who gets to go first. Ten. Six. Six. Close. Ten. Four. Ten. Six. Ooh. I rolled a lot of tens. Five. 
Oh, I died. All right, I I've lost first. like my last seven sevens games in a row. It's all right though. I kind of like being on the draw, basically, all the time. Not really. It's horrible. Okay. Well, I think that this hand is a keeper. Um, we have to figure out what we're gonna do on our first turn, but I am gonna keep this hand. Uh, I am also going to keep this hand. Uh. It's a little complicated, though. I think uh, having these two cards in your opening hand really puts a strain on which one you should do first. And uh, it, I think it's completely matchup dependent. But we're, we're definitely going to keep. But I'm going to wait and see what he does before I decide what I do on turn one. So, right, so I think we definitely want to cast this spell turn one. And so we're going to fetch for a land. And for the most part, I am under the impression, especially if... I have, you know, multiple lands in my hand to just not try and play around a wasteland, so. I mean, that's perfectly reasonable. I think people play around wasteland way, way too, too much. much. yeah. I think having, like, anywhere from two to four basics in your deck actually makes you more prone to wasteland for the times where you just naturally draw your dual lands or you yeah. fetch for, like, a basic or two and then you fetch for duels. Yeah. I also like <laughs> playing into wasteland, so there's been multiple times when I'm playing Omnitel where I'll have, like, four lands in my opener and just like fetch a volcanic island right off the bat game one when I have no red spells in my main deck yeah just to get them to waste me and then it's like I just get an extra turn that's pretty smart all right so we're gonna ponder and these are the three cards that we hit off ponder and these cards all kind of do something do they yeah <laughs> technically <laughs> um and I think that they're all actually going to be fairly decent in this matchup. So I think what we want to do is we just put it back like this um, and go from there. So we'll draw, and then it'll be your turn. All right. So oddly enough, um, against the slower decks, you generally want to suspend Ancestral Visions, especially because there's a high likelihood of, that my Death Shaman just dies to like a plow or a bolt on turn two. Um, but if he plows or bolts on turn two, that's actually good for me because that means he's not casting Stoneforge Mystics. So uh, in case it doesn't, though, we're going to fetch a black here so that if he does kill Deathrite, we can still cast a spell on turn two. Uh, we're going to go to 19, get an Underground C. Let's say go. The longer you wait to suspend Ancestral, the worse it is, but in a matchup like this where it's likely going to... The game's going to go for probably 10 turns or so at least. I think it's fine. Uh, your turn. Alright, guy didn't die. That's pretty great. Hmm. Alright, well, stick with the plan. Uh, exile your uh, Arid Mesa. This will... Play a land first, just in case. Play around days in case he's playing Just Guy Delver. Play him to Torak. Yep. I'll spell snare the ham. And I'll suspend ancestral visions. And say go. Okay, so we know what's on top of our deck. And we know that we don't want to draw it, so we're going to go ahead and fetch. Okay. I think that we want to get a volcanic here just in case we happen to draw into a lightning bolt we do have another white source in our hand so yeah that right shaman's real good nah it's it's alright don't worry about it just leave him be just leave him be just leave him be <laughs> alright so now we get to draw and it's not quite what we're looking for, but I feel like we're probably safe to just use this to get rid of his Deathrite Shaman here, um, since we do have some other backup, so I'll just cast Council's Judgment. I'll vote for this. Yeah, I'll vote for the Deathrite <laughs> too. And that'll be your turn. Alright. Uh, tick. That was real good. Fetch him. And we'll just keep getting uh, blue-black lands since 
it's the better. Well, I might actually, in case I'm probably not going to get wastelanded, but there is a small likelihood of that happening, so we'll do that instead. I'm going to be at 18. I think I have to use this because if I let it resolve and it hits these two cards, then we're just kind of like super dead. So I think that I just want to do this. So I'll force pitching a still pierce. Yeah, having control over the him is obviously still good for me because I'm still two for wanting him, but he's protecting uh, probably something like a Snapcaster Mage or something like that. Uh, we'll play a Death Rite and say go. All right. Now it's possible that I should have pitched this instead of the spell pierce, since my plan is to cast this anyways. Um, but I think that's okay. Well, that was definitely a good draw. Two. Actually, it was like the best draw possible. No. Right, so we're gonna plow this death right shaman. Right, I'm gonna go to 19. I think that I just want to cast this now. You have three cards. Two. Two cards. That way. <coughs> I don't want him to draw into like a force of will or a blue card if he has one or the other. Or I can just wait. Hmm. That's tough. I don't really know exactly what I'm looking for yet, so maybe it's better to just wait. Yeah, wait, go. All right. Tick. Draw. Well, that was probably a good draw. If he's waiting over there. I guess I just have to do this now. Ooh, wow. Okay. That's a good draw. I'll dig. Ah, right, good draw. Good card. That's what I meant. Like, right. I could have just done it on my turn, but... I mean, it's really not like sure you're casting anything. Really? Like, now now you actually have a... Uh, a little more control over what to take. But that is just gross. Yeah! That's what I like to hear. Six lands? Yeah. <laughs> I guess we just take these two. Well, at least you ain't drawn six lands. All right. Um, huh. I don't know. Well, I'm going to go 17. It's going to make it 17 all. <sighs> Taking Batter Skull just makes the Stoneforge Mystic so much worse uh, over the course of, like, the entirety of the game. But Samcaster Mage um, could be, like, his one reasonable way to, to pressure me. Although, I do have, like, two turns to draw things to interact with it. Uh, if I take Snapcaster Mage, that'll make my Tarmogoy is a 4-5, which will actually just be bigger than his Batter Skull. Um, so, but if he draws a True Name Nemesis, then I could be in a lot of trouble. I almost Regardless, I'm playing this. Um, Taking a Fetch might have been better, just because if you draw a Brainstorm. I mean, I don't but know. Do, I, do I really want to shuffle five lands back into my deck, though? Oh, that's fair. Wow. <laughs> that's why yeah. I didn't take the fetch. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is tough. Is it, those are, like, two very good cards. Um, It might have been right for me just to let you thought seize me. Was it dig snap? Yeah, it was dig snap. Okay. Because then I could just snap the dig if I draw, draw a land. That's reasonable. Uh, All right. I'll just take Yeah, that might have just been better. Rather than I give you a choice of the cards that I would dig for. Yeah. Yeah, that was a mistake. Go. Well, if you had two spells, you'd much rather have your hand be spell, spell, snapcaster, but it was just yeah. kind of unfortunate. Go ahead. All right. And that creeping tar pit. That creeping tar pit. Mm. All right. Hope you didn't draw anything. All right, well, we got rid of it. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to hold this land in case I draw a Brainstorm uh, so I can have something else to put back. I'm trying to think of what sequence would require me to want six lands. Right. 
Maybe there are enough sequences off of the draw three. Alright, or we'll play it. Go. Counterspell. And the famous words of saliva. Tick, tick, boom! Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Three. Draw step. Okay. Uh, suspend this. Four. Uh, Alright. Tack. Thirteen. Thirteen, seventeen. Go. I guess I'll hold on to it. Go ahead. Tick. No, I should play it. Alright. Draw. Well, that certainly changes things a little bit. Helm playing his land means that his last card is likely a land. Oh no, because I. Oh, maybe not. I'm trying to figure out what playing the land means. It's probably not a force of will, but it might be. I'll just say go. Good. Tick. Draw. Go. Sure, mm. <laughs> you want to shuffle those five lands back in? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, a lot of people fetch to like thin their deck, uh, even after the, they know that the bottom of their deck is full of bad cards. But I suppose it all depends. Like if he has a, a dig through time, then yeah. Go ahead. All right, one. Uh. Still get GTA, which could be problematic in the long run, and I don't want to just keep sitting back on this. So I might get spell pierced and punished for not playing my land, but I think that I still just want to do this. Go. Tip. Draw three. Right. One, two, three. Draw for turn. Yeah, two cards in hand, so I guess I'll just lead off with uh, him to Torak. Another one? Yeah, dog. I'll snare it. Alright. I'll play... See, I guess I'll play around Spell Pierce now that I can. I don't really want to wasteland this turn. I'll play uh, Liliana. Sure. I'll take up. I'll cast that in response. Uh, sure. All right. I'll discard a Misty I'm Rainforest. Spell, sure. Uh, go. I'll pawn it. I don't think any of these cards are gonna do it. At this point, you probably need like a sequence of at least two cards. One of them probably needs to be a dig or a jace. Yeah. Well, what's happening here is one of the problems that I had with that when I was trying to play the Shard of the deck. Is sometimes it's very difficult to close games out. Like mm. I got a handful of unintentional draws from playing that deck just because of that. I draw for my ponder. Mm -hmm. Bam. Sure. Well, I think this resolving is probably one of the only ways that we're actually going to win this game. Sure. 
drop. So I'll attack your Liliana. I think I'm okay with that. So we have this. Alright, it goes to two. I'll fetch. Yep. You go to twelve. And we might as well just get another duel since we got all non basics anyways. Yeah. And oh, I have a wasteland, so you want to I'll try this guy. Oh, I'm gonna counter it. I suppose. I don't know how to do that. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh I'm just gonna force pitch Shardless Agent. It's one of the reasons why I cast a little last turn instead of Shardless Agent. Just in case I needed to force uh yep. I'm at 16. Am I at 16 or 15? Uh, 16, Did I miss I something? Count. Okay. Nope, 16, 16 and 12. Alright. Draw. I don't really want to take up Liliana. Let's see. So I can death right attack. Alright. Uh, attack for 3. 9. Play death right. And I'm going to go and fetch underground and pass the turn. Take your time. Tilt. Wow. Yeah, you're new here. That <laughs> happens a lot. <laughs> you're new here. Yep. Alright, so. One, two, three, four, five, six. Probably want to exile the dig, right? Since you have another snapcaster mage in your deck and you don't need two digs in your yard? Maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot that this dig actually goes in the graveyard. So I'll leave the ponder. Sure. I mean, you might want both just because I can eat one. But yeah. I don't know. Well. Got some good options here. I guess I can. I have to imagine that he has a an abrupt decay, which is going to kill my Snapcaster Mage. So I don't really have a way to handle Soliana. Gay lie. <laughs> I could take these two. Which aren't that bad, although this is an answer to the creeping tarpet. The problem is I'm not going to be able to. I'm likely not going to be able to keep a card in my hand since he has that Jace. So it's probably going to be best to just take these two. I'll put these on the bottom. All right. See what happens. So before I do anything, I'll brainstorm. I kind of just want to kill a Snapcaster Mage now. Can't imagine there's like a way he can punish me for waiting, but... Just feels right. Just kill in response. I don't know. Go a lot on field and legacy. Brainstorm. Yeah. Well, those those aren't bad, actually. Tilt. Alright, so I can... Should have just killed you seven turns ago, so just sitting With back on my force level. Yeah. <laughs> just didn't want to die. <laughs> I think I keep these two, and I'll cast this. And I'll put these back like this. Alright. 
spinning the wheels. We need to draw like a Charlotte's agent or a Jace or a Dig Through Time. Some two for one y type thing would be great. Seal this game. Hmm. So I actually don't know if this is going to be fast enough. But we're going to give it a shot either way. Alright. Keep draw. Yeah. Alright, plus me to 16. And then it's your turn. I feel like one of the easiest ways for us to lose this game is if... Uh, he goes for like Caracas on Vendillion click or something um, and then also has an answer for Tar Pit so I kinda wanna wasteland his Caracas but I kinda wanna wasteland his Volcanic Island right now uh, so he can't uh, Red Elemental Blast this and I get in three points alright well lead off with a brainstorm I assume that he's not gonna counter it if yeah. it is a Reb because he wants to kill this since it turns blue Hmm. Trying to think if true name and so he can't go he can't have true name and GTA next turn, but he can have true name into GTA. But I have this Lily, so I think I'm okay getting rid of the deluge, so I'll just tick up. Cool. And then uh attack for three six. I'm trying to think of a sequence where I want to kill the Caracas right now. Uh, eh, kill it, whatever. Go. I guess you could draw like Brainstorm and do another Ponder or something. Snap Dig, be a Mana Short to cast something. Go ahead. Uh, brainstorm. Yeah. I actually sequenced this all wrong. I'm just dead. Alright. Time goes. Yeah, I actually sequenced this all wrong. I'm just actually dead. I can't stop this. Yep. 